Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do an AC analysis on a, a CE transistor amplifier uh, shown on the left here. And we're going to derive some expressions for a ZI, ZO, AV, and AI. So ZI means uh, input impedance as seen by VI. Uh, ZO is the output impedance as seen by VO. Uh, AV is the voltage gain and AI is the current gain, all right? All right, so when we do AC analysis, uh, the first thing we should do is, there's a couple of steps we need to do. I mean, first of all, we should short all capacitors. See down here, I put up some notes about uh, what you need to do. So first step is to short all capacitors. So because we're assuming that at the uh, relevant signal frequency, the all, all the capacitors are uh, have a negligible impedance, all right? So that means we, for now, we're assuming that there are zero ohm. So meaning this C1 becomes a short, C2 also becomes a short. All right. The next thing we do is we zero all DC sources. So in this circuit, there's only one DC source, and that's this VCC. Uh, so that needs to become a zero. So instead of VCC volts, it will be zero volts. Uh, all right. So and so which means that if it's zero volts, it means that the top part of RB and the top part of RC now ends up as the ground. So the RB will have one end on the base of the transistor, the other end will be connected to ground. And similarly for RC, the bottom part of RC is connected to the collector, and the top part of RC is uh, will be connected to ground once we do uh, step number two. And step number three, we have to replace our transistor with, uh, well, one of the models. In this case, I'm using the RE model. Uh, just to remind you guys, so this is what an RE model looks like. Uh, it has the base, it has the, sorry, it has the base, that's the base side, that's the collector side, and down here is the emitter side. It has a beta RE, uh, it has a beta IB, it also has an RO. Alright, so this is the uh, RE model uh, for a transistor. Okay. Uh, well, for a common emitter transistor uh, arrangement, okay? So, uh, so once we do all three steps, we should get any, uh, 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 a circuit that looks like this here. On, you can see on the right there, all right? So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, C1 and C2 become short, so they're not here anymore. Uh, RB and RC, the top part becomes ground, so that's why RB ends up uh, the, the top part of RB ends up uh, ground, so it ends up at the bottom. And the top part of RC also becomes ground. The other side is to the collector, there's RC. Top part is connected to the collector. The bottom part is connected to ground. And then the transistor is replaced by this uh, RE model. All right. Uh, so we need to go and figure out uh, what ZI is, uh, ZO, AV, and AI. So let's do that. Uh, okay, so ZI is defined as the the input impedance as seen by by VI. Well, ZI is just basically resistance uh, impedance. So again, using Ohm's law, uh, R equals uh, V over I. V over I. In this case, V over I is V VI over II. Right. So uh, let's just let's just write that equation uh, first of all. Uh, sorry. All right. So, so we're talking about uh, input impedance All right, so that's going to be ZI Z of I is going to be uh, simply using Ohm's law uh, R equals V of I so that's going to be V uh, V I divided by uh, I I All right, so that's the current Going into uh, the 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 components to the right, all right. So that's what Z I is. So now we need to go and figure out. Uh, well, what is what is V I? Uh, well, what is I I? What is V I? Well, if you look if you look at I B here, now I B is a current that just flows into beta R E, all right. So we can actually write an expression. Uh, that links IB with 
I I. Uh, okay, so what is that expression? If you notice, you know I I comes in here, and then that current gets split between R B and beta R E. Uh, so this is a so if you want to write an expression for that links I I, I B R B and beta R E, uh, is basically a current divider. All right, so we just use a current divider uh, equation. So input input Z I. So next line I want to say um, the using current divider rule. All right. So then we can write uh, in terms of I B. All right. So IB is going to be equal to the total current, which is II in this case, multiplied by um, RB, all right, multiplied by RB, divided by RB plus beta RE, all right, oh, sorry, beta RE, all right, so that's from the RE model, okay, so that's our expression for IB. Okay. Uh, so, so that's IB. Uh, and because uh, from this equation, therefore, we can actually uh, figure out what II is. All right. Uh, therefore, if I want to write an expression for II, will be I. II is going to be equal to IB. All right. Um, I'm just you know, moving this side to the, from the right side to the left side. Uh, so the top part will be RB plus beta RE. All right, all divided by RB. All right, so that's our expression for, for II. Okay, so now what about uh, VI? Well, VI is the voltage that is across RB and is also a voltage across beta RE because these two resistors are in parallel. All right, so you can write an expression for VI in terms of IB and beta RE. All right, so that's write an expression for VI. So since um, V underscore I is also across uh, beta RE, all right, uh, beta RE. We can write VI. We can write uh, so V and so I. V equals IR, right? So I is IB. All right, multiply by uh, because IR R is beta RE. So that's just beta and then RE. All right. All right. So now we have uh, an expression for VI, and we also have an expression for II. So the work out ZI, you just you know one divided by the other. Alright. So uh, so I can write uh, ZI. So ZI is equal to uh, VI, which is uh, I which is this one here, right? Alright, that's that one there. So Z equals that. All of it divided by uh, I is all of this, so uh, so at the bottom there's going to be a uh, well. It's going to write. Let me just write everything down first. Uh, I is going to be I B times R B plus beta R B. Sorry, beta R D. All right, all divided by uh, R B. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's what that is, and you should notice that by doing this, the IB cancels out, and then this kettle RB ends up at the top. So you're gonna get the expression of beta beta RE times RB all divided by RB plus uh, beta R E. All right, and so that's that's our expression for for Z I. Okay. Uh, so are there any simplifications that can be done here? Well, uh, it depends. So for example, if 
but it, it, you know, if if we keep it as it is, this is a more or less a complete expression for zi. But if you can imagine that if uh, beta re is very much smaller than rb, all right, if beta re is very much smaller than beta than rb, then the beta re at the bottom becomes insignificant. Uh, then you're left with just rb at the bottom. So if you have if you're left with just rb at the bottom, then both rb at the bo uh, top and the bottom will cancel out. Then zi will just simply be beta re. All right. So let me just write that if uh, beta re. So if beta re is much smaller than rb. All right. Then uh, zi is just going to be equal to uh, beta re times rb all divided by just rb, right? All right, so since uh, rb top and bottom will cancel out, so that i will just become beta re. So that's the uh, simplest uh, uh, a version of zi if you like all right that's assuming that beta re is much less than rb okay so that's it that's that i done let's move on to the next which is zo uh, so what is that oh well zo is a uh, uh the resistance seen by vo uh going towards the left now whenever we do an output impedance we must always zero the source all right uh to derive Zero. We must always zero the source. Zero. All right. So to derive that O, we must always zero the source. And so in this case, when you zero the source signal, uh, which means VI here, if that is zero, uh, then the top part and the bottom part will be now connected. All right, so that means the top part and the bottom part will have the same potential. Uh, so therefore, there won't be any current flowing. So IB would be zero. All right. Uh, okay, so when IB equals zero, uh, then you're going to get beta IB also zero. So if IB is zero, beta IB is going to be zero. All right, so which means when you look at ZO looking in, you're just going to see an RC and R, R not being in parallel, right? All right, so to derive zero, we must always zero the single source and the source signal, uh, all right? As a result, IB equals zero. It's going to be equal to zero amps, all right? All right, uh, so when that happens, uh, then, uh, okay, therefore, Beta IB, beta IB will also equal to zero, all right? All right, so beta IB equals zero, all right? So meaning that uh, our output impedance, zero, will simply be, uh, as I said, RC parallel with little ro. So we RC parallel with a little RO, all right? So that's the complete expression for what ZO is, okay? Now, if uh, another another common uh, thing that people would uh, equate, if, the, if RO is much, much bigger, you know, ten more than ten times or more more than RC. All right. Then our expression for Z uh, O will simply be equal to RC. All right. Because remember the uh, remember the uh, the RC and RO are in parallel. So if RO is very very big, then 
it will cease to contribute to the overall impedance, uh, then it will just become RC. All right. Okay, so this is well. Okay, these are all approximations, of course. So, uh, approx. All right. So approximately uh, RC. So same with uh, the ZI. Uh, so it's going to be approximately beta R U R B. So approx. Right. And so is this. All right. Okay. So now we have expressions for Z i. We have expression for Z o. All right. Okay. All right. So uh, so now we have Z o and Z i. Uh, now we need to figure out what a v and a i's are. So first of all, uh, a v. So uh, voltage gain in, uh, is defined as uh, so that's uh, a v is equal to uh, v o divided by VI. Alright, so that's what it's defined as. Uh, and then we can write uh, VO using uh, Ohm's law. V equals IR. So VO is here. So VO is uh, over there. Uh, I is actually in the... See, IO, because v, VO is positive uh, pointing up. So, which means that the current needs to be positive pointing down. But since I O is pointing up, so we need to do a negative of that in order to get a current that is pointing down. So, so you're going to get a negative I O multiplied by Z O. All right. So that's the, uh, the output impedance. All right. So this is just Ohm's law. Uh, and then, and for V I, uh, V I uh, is simply equals to, okay, V I is on this side here. Uh, again, using Ohm's law, it's just going to be uh, I I times uh, Z I. All right, so I I times Z I. Oops, sorry, Z I. All right. Oops, uh, Z I. Okay, fine. All right, so that's that's our expression for V O and V I. Uh, so we need to go and figure out. What is I O? What is I I? Because we already have Z O and Z I, so we just need to work, figure out what I O and I I is are. All right. Uh, so to work out what I O is, well, we already actually we already have I I, so we just need to work out what I O is. Well, I O is, uh, if you look at this, it's a current that is going up uh, on the R C branch. Uh, but if you notice this right, the entire right hand side, there is a current source. A dependent current source of beta IB. So beta IB is a current that flows down and then goes up to both of these and then combine again at the top and then and then and then return back to uh, beta IB. So we can write an expression for IO in terms of beta IB and RO and RC uh, as a current using the current divider rule. Alright? So uh, using the current divider rule. Uh, we can write an expression for IO, right? So IO is going to be equal to the total current, which in this case is uh, beta IB, so it's beta uh, IB, multiplied by uh, the other resistance, which is RO, divided by uh, the sum of the two uh, resistance, so it's RC, all right, okay? So that's our expression for IO. Okay, uh, so we, we now have enough to uh, work out everything because we have ZO, we have ZI, now we just got IO, and of course we have II from up there. So now we can work out what uh, AV is. So voltage gain AV, all right. Uh, is just V O over V I, where V O is negative I O, uh, Z O. All of this divided by I I uh, times Z I. Okay, let's put in brackets here. Let me see. All right. Okay, that works out. All right. So now let's just substitute all these things in. All right. So it's going to be negative, and then the top part 
the top part is going to be uh, IO, which is this term here. So I'll just copy that. All right. Times uh, ZO, which is this term here. Oh, I'm going to expand this RC parallel RO, expand it into uh, the, the the expanded version, which is going to be uh, basically R O times uh, R C, all divided by R O plus R C. All right. So that's just the uh, the parallel term expanded. All right, and then all of this is divided by the bottom part, which is uh, I I Z I, and I I is uh, we did it before, which is all of this. So I'm going to copy all that. All right, so I is all that times uh, uh, ZI, which is uh, all of this. All right, so I'm going to copy all that. Uh, put it here. All right, so I'll put it there. Okay, so close that, and all right. So now we look at what terms will disappear. Uh, well, we can see that uh, IB will disappear. So let's just highlight those. So IB will disappear because uh, it cancels top and bottom. There's IB on uh, both top and bottom. So so IB down here will disappear. All right, and then uh, what else will disappear? Well, you have RB plus beta RE. You also have RB plus beta RE here, so that will also disappear. All right, so that part is going to go, and so will this. All right, so that's gone. Uh, RB will disappear because there's an RB term there and an RB term down here. So that's going to disappear. And so will this RB, all right? So it will cancel out. All right. Uh, well, there's a beta term up there, and there's a beta term down here. So beta will disappear, all right? So beta will disappear. All right, so beta will disappear. OK, so what do you like? Uh, what are you left with? Um, well, effectively, you just have an RE at the bottom, but then you have all those terms at the top. So let's just write that out. So it's going to be a negative. Oh, sorry. Uh, so it's going to be negative R O squared. All right. All right. So R squared uh, multiplied by R C divided by uh, RO squared, uh, sorry, RO plus RC squared, all squared, all right, all squared, all right. So uh, that's the top part. All of this is then divided by, sorry, all right. So this is what I have uh, left, R squared over uh, RC, and then uh, divided by R O plus RC. Now, all right, so this is the expression we got for voltage gain. It looks a bit hairy. Uh, but if you notice, typically R O is actually very, very large compared to RC. All right, so typically R O is very, very large compared to RC. So as a result, RC would be insignificant. All right, so typically, uh, R0 or RO is much, much bigger than RC. So therefore, we can simplify the expression a bit uh, for AV. All right. Uh, so if, if R0 is much, much bigger than RC, uh, then it means the RC term is going to be insignificant, and all you have uh, left is just going to be RO squared. And that RO squared can cancel out with the RO squared at the top, and what you're left with is just RC divided by RE. So therefore, um, AV will just reduce to uh, RC divided by little RE.
right? Okay, so that's the expression for uh, AV. <clears throat> now for AI. Well, uh, let's have a look at AI. Well, the uh, current game uh, is defined uh, as AI is simply equals to IO divided by II. Oops, sorry. Uh, I. All right. All right. So we already have expressions for IO, which is uh, here. We also have a special for II, which is there. So we just have to put one over the other. So this is the full thing. So it's going to be equals to uh, so it's going to be equal to I'm just going to put a bracket around the whole thing. All right. Uh, all that divided by all of this. All right. So all that divided by all of this. All right. So that's to be equal to to what? Well, what cancels out? Well, you can see that IB cancels out. All right. Uh, so let's 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 mark those. So IB will cancel out with top and bottom. All right. So IB will cancel out. Okay. Will anything else cancel out? Uh, doesn't seem to be. So therefore, what you're going to left with is uh, beta at the top there, beta times uh, RO divided by, sorry, RO divided by RO plus RC, right? Uh, and all of that is going to be divided by, oh, uh, sorry, and then this RB at the bottom there will end up at the top. So it's going to be times RB, all right? And all that divided by in bracket RB plus uh, beta RE, all right? So beta RE, okay? Okay, so that's the expression that we have uh, after uh, you know, crossing out a few things. Uh, well, again, we can look at simplifying this. Uh, so for example, uh, typically for RO, it is typically very large compared to RC. So then what you'll have uh, at the top there is uh, RC become, becoming insignificant compared to RO. So then the RO will cancel top and bottom. That's one. The other one is uh, beta RE is typically much, much smaller than RB. All right, beta RE is much, much smaller than RB. So which means that the beta RE part will become insignificant and the RB will cancel out. So what you'll have is eventually is just beta. All right, so uh, typically uh, you're going to get RO is going to be much, much larger than RC. And uh, also beta RE RE is typically much, much smaller than uh, RB. All right. So, so therefore, uh, our expression for AI is going to be is going to simplify to just beta. All right, and that's the final answer. Okay, so uh, hopefully this gives you a, an idea of how do you uh, do a full AC analysis on a typical CE amplifier. Uh, just to just to recap, uh, you need to convert your initial circuit into an AC equivalent. Yeah, by doing these three things. All right, and eventually you end up with a circuit like this. And then with a circuit like that, you start working out uh, what are expressions for uh, II, IO, ZI, and ZO. Once you have those four things, then you can start working out what AV and AI is going to be. That's AI. All right? Okay, thanks for watching. Till the next video.